Well, welcome everyone. Uh, for those who are visiting, my name is Father Tom Pomeroy. I am the pastor here at Holy Family Parish. I just want to say, this is an exciting time for our community. It is a really exciting time for our community. And when I say community, I have a couple of different meanings there. First of all, it's an exciting time for our parish. We have been discussing this building project for 20 years. And we have all kinds of people here who have been part of that discussion. We have the Christian Mothers and the Ladies Sodality. I remember when we had our first video, we got our video in, professionally made. I was so excited and I had no one to show it to that I interrupted their meeting, shoved in a TV, and they got to be the first people to see it. We have the Knights of Columbus, always supportive of our community. We have our school families, our faith formation families, their parents and students. We have all of our parishioners here who, and all of our donors. This is our community. It's an exciting thing for us because we have worked on this for a long time. But in saying community, I'm also meaning our civic community. The, the, the towns, uh, 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 let's see, Brilliant and Reedsville and Maple Grove, all of those, that part, this is going to be a blessing for them as well. We are part of that community, and, and it's special for all of us. But even more than that, our community is bigger. It includes our entire diocese. This is our community. This is why Bishop Banks is here, so welcome Bishop Banks. I mean, Bishop Rickon. <laughs> It says Bishop Ricken, but we were talking about Bishop Banks right before we came out here. He was my ordaining bishop, so I, I, I apologize. I've been a priest for a long time. So, so welcome to our community. And it, it's important because Catholic education is important to our diocese, the entire diocese. That's why we have Father Tom Long back with us, because he sort of began this whole project. That's why... Hey, Father Tom. And even the other members of our diocese. Uh, we have Cindy Bronner and Josh Diedrich, and we have so many other distinguished guests in our midst, because the diocese is important, because Catholic education is important. And this building will help that education. Mm -hmm. So this is a special day for us all. And mm -hmm. as pastor of this parish, I welcome everyone. And I would like to begin this celebration with a song that our students... And now I would like to introduce Tom Keyes, our trustee 
uh, and our MC for the event. So welcome, Tom. Thank you, Father Tom, and uh, welcome everybody. Welcome, Bishop. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I am privileged to uh, introduce um, a lot of the speakers here today and uh, give you a quick rundown on um, what will take place, and we'll try to keep it moving. Um, but just one thought that comes to my mind, and uh, Father Tom has mentioned this a couple of times over the last year, and what we're doing here, um, I think, really will have an impact um, for the next hundred years in this community, and uh, that's a pretty awesome thing. <clears throat> so, um, we will have more music from the uh, students, which uh, was fantastic. We'll have a handful of speakers. We'll hear about the capital campaign, and we'll hear about the building committee, and then um, we'll hear from representatives of Holy Family School and our Holy Family Faith Formation. Um, also, you know, take for granted that uh, this new facility is going to be a home also for adult education and youth groups and, and all sorts of exciting things. So uh, there'll be uh, later blessings of uh, the site and, and the soil for Bishop Ricken and uh, an address from Bishop Ricken. And then the ceremonial, we'll, we'll all head out to the ground pile out there and we'll have the ceremonial breaking of the ground. And uh, that will be very, very exciting. Uh, afterwards, there is food and refreshments inside the um, hospitality room here. So everybody, please help yourself to that and mingle and celebrate today. So um, I have been very privileged to serve on the Capital Campaign Committee with a bunch of amazing people over the last year and um, one of the very amazing people is going to come up and say a few words about that right now. I'd like to welcome Jason Peelhop up here. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Bishop Rickin, Father Tom, Deacon Greg, distinguished guests, Mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of Holy Family Parish, thank you for coming today to celebrate our Learning Center's groundbreaking. The campaign committee has worked diligently since its inception last year, and only through your gifts and pledges have we gotten to this occasion today. Today is our parish's someday. We gather here today to know that soon you'll, you'll be sitting in the expanded uh, social hall. Over here we'll be in the, the music and youth rooms. And where the groundbreaking out there will take place, <coughs> where the main entryway will guide our children to learning our faith, guide our community to sharing in the faith, and that the Holy Spirit will guide our parish in our faith journey. So I have a couple of thank yous. First, Father Tom, thank you for your leadership on this project, opening the rectory to our campaign committee to um, get together for our meetings. Uh, thank you uh, to Bishop Ricken and the Catholic Foundation um, for their hope with the one by one campaign and their overwhelming support to allow all the dollars that we raise for this to come to our project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bob and Pat Endries, for your guidance, support, and philanthropy to our parish and to our community. Thank you. And uh, to all the fellows and ladies on the Capital Campaign Committee, thank you for your diligence and perseverance through this whole time. But last but not least, obviously, thank you all for your pledges and your 
gifts towards this great project. Um, as a father to children that go to the school, it's so exciting. Uh, I remember when me and Deacon were out here putting all the flags up to be able to show kind of where everything was. Uh, it started snowing, and we were kind of at that point where uh, we were getting close to um, getting to the match funds. And we weren't really sure if it was going to do that. And lo and behold, it wasn't more than a couple of weeks later, all of a sudden we got there, and it's like, hallelujah. <laughs> so it's, it's great to be here. So, so the Capital Campaign Committee has a goal to see this project through so that at the end of the pledge terms, this project will be debt free. We have about 800000 left to finish the campaign. To be debt free, we do want to ask everyone to prayerfully consider pledging or even possibly increasing your pledge. Because we also want to announce that there is another anonymous match campaign for the final push. We'll have campaign committee members inside the social hall during the refreshments um, with pledge cards and um, to answer any questions that you may have. Today is the day the Lord has made, Let and our parish did it together. together. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. And, uh, you know, we had been asked, and rightfully so, a number of times when this uh, campaign was getting underway, um, how, how can you um, start a campaign like this with what's all going on in the world right now? And um, I think the uh, folks on that committee and, and others just said, God chose this time. And it, it wasn't us that chose this time. So praise the Lord. Um, Holy Family School uh, does amazing things. And uh, the parents, the children, the teachers, and the administration... I'd um, like you to hear a little bit about that, and um, I would like to invite Scott Smith, principal of Holy Family School. Good morning. Good morning. Um, if you don't know me, quick introduction. I'm Scott Smith. I'm the principal, uh, NPE teacher this year, the last two years, actually. Um, I've had the pleasure of being here probably since this started 20 years ago, actually. I started back in 2001. My first year was at the Reedsville campus, and then after that, I've been in Brilliant. Um, and actually, the past 15 years, I've been the uh, principal, too. I would like to thank all of you for coming out this morning and all your efforts to make this dream of a new Catholic Learning Center a reality. Many of us who have worked at Holy Family for a number of years, even generations, um, only thought this was a dream. We can't imagine what it means to the staff, the students, to know how much you care about the work that we do at the school. When someone decides to become a teacher, it's not to become rich or notoriety. It's, um, it's about helping kids and making the community around us a better place. And every year I'm amazed at what Holy Family students have accomplished in our communities. As a staff, we are always super excited to see former students send their kids to the school, knowing that Holy Family made a difference in their lives and that they want the same opportunities for their kids as they had at our school. And always at the front of education is faith. And our teachers do an amazing job doing that. Um, this learning center will also help teachers give students more opportunity to succeed. The ability to walk down the hall and actually be at the church. So when Mrs. Krieger is working with students who are receiving first reconciliation and first communion, she is able to, to go right into the church. 
when teachers are practicing with their students for the Christmas play, weekly church services, and reconciliation, we are able to walk right to the church. To have a STEM lab where students can be 21st century learners, the ability to accommodate students and faculty who might not be able to manage three flights of stairs at our existing school. Not having to worry about the heavy rainstorm, whether we'll have a flooded basement, um, <laughs> having classrooms that are designed and equipped to help students <coughs> and staff succeed. Classrooms that have sinks, storage, and the ability to cater to the variety of, variety of learners we have today. Having a gym that is attached and available at all times. And not just being, ha having gym classes, but incorporating that gym with science and other classes. Again, I cannot thank you enough for all the people that were involved in this project. The staff, the students, the families will never forget all that you have done. Thank you so much and God bless. Thank you, Scott. And uh, I think we all recognize that the future of Holy Family School is very, very bright. Um, also, um, Holy Family Faith Formation Program is very vibrant and very vital in this parish and in this community. Um, representing the Faith Formation Program this morning is one of our Faith Formation teachers, and um, we'd like to invite Danielle Krieger to come up and talk about that. Hello, my name is Danielle Krieger, and I'm the third grade catechist for Faith Formation. Seeing the children grow in their faith each week gets me excited, and bringing the children back gets them even more excited. Monica and Brianna were not able to be here today, so they asked me to share a few words on their behalf. Our hearts are filled with gratitude and excitement for the Learning Center to become a reality. Thank you for all of the monetary donors who have been instrumental in making this project come to fruition. For some of us, it's coming as a great sacrifice. But as we know, sacrifice makes us stronger and more grateful for the blessings God has given us. But most importantly, thank you for your prayers, for nothing is impossible with God. There are several reasons Faith Formation is looking forward to a learning center. People of all ages will benefit from this space, but here's what we are most excited for. One, access to the church at any time. This will be extremely beneficial for our young adults and youth who are receiving sacramental preparation. Adoration for all grades, not just high school. All students will have the opportunity to spend time with Jesus face to face. Two, unity having all grades on one site. Parents will no longer have to run back and forth from one site to another for drop off and pick up. Three, a youth room, complete with comfy furniture, a big screen TV, games and a foosball table, a prayer table, a kitchenette with a pizza maker and a popcorn machine, and a dedicated space for your children to, gather, to come together in fellowship. Four updated classroom settings complete with technology upgrades. Five classrooms that comfortably fit our large classes, sometimes up to 20 students. A faith formation closet in every room. And finally, most importantly, handicap accessibility to meet the needs of everyone. It has been a pleasure to be part of this momentous day. Thank you for all being here. God bless. Thank you for those informative words, Danielle, and for all you do for Holy Family Parish. Um, when it became apparent that 
this uh, project was in the capital campaign was going to be successful, um, it was time to look back one more time at the building itself and to go back through it, see if there was anything that needed to be tweaked and um, anything that needed to have special attention paid to it. If, there was, if we were doing things the most cost effective way and we heard that from people who were pledging, they wanted us to do due diligence. So um, we were ta I talked with Jerry Cohn and uh, he has a extensive history in building and um, he said I'd like to be part of that. Well then after we did that um, Keller started bringing more of the information to us. Um, we had a different, uh, it was a capital campaign meeting and we're sitting around and decided that we should have one person now that this construction is going to get underway who is the focus or at least the conduit of of all of the decisions, all of the uh, uh, information flow and stuff. So we're sitting in this meeting and uh, John School pulls out his phone, calls up Jerry Cohn, and before Bob had the question even out, Jerry said, yes, I'll do that. So uh, the building project is in very good hands. I'd like to bring Jerry Cohn up here. Hello everyone. Wow. <laughs> One thing I've noticed um, is everybody comes up here with nice typed up notes. Um, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jerry Cohn. I'd like to thank you Bishop Ricken thank for you, being man. here. Father yeah. Tom. Um, it's great um, for the time for the future of Catholic education at Holy Family Parish. I'd like to also thank um, Nancy Mueller, who is in the back, um, for putting this together, making sure it's all running properly. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the many people that were before me. Um, three years of people planning this, um, countless meetings, ideas, getting it on notes, getting it on paper to a final blueprint that we can build off of. There's a lot of people involved um, that I don't know um, throughout the years, so whoever you are, thank you very much. Um, without you, um, this wouldn't be possible as well. Um, as Tom said about a month ago, um, I received a call from John if I would do this, and um, I'm very happy to do this. Um, I retired maybe a year, year and a half ago, and I miss it. Um, this is great for me. I, I like doing this. I have 45 years of building experience in the commercial um, building, so my goal is to be the eyes and ears of all of you out here. Um, if you have questions, that you can come to one person. If the builders have questions, they come to one person, and then I can take it to the building committee, and we can come up with a, a solution a uh, sensible solution without any bickering or, or anything like that. Um, everybody has an opinion and we welcome that and we will come together and, and make it what we need and the way it should be built and, and accomplished at the end of the day. Um, there are people on the building committee um, that need to be recognized. Dave Don, John School, Carl Weber, Ken Schuster, Tom Keyes, Father Tom and Deacon Greg, um, I will be attending all of the weekly building uh, meetings that will be out here on site during this project, and then I will take our, our, our meeting notes and meeting minutes back to our building committee every other week we plan on meeting so that we can review it so that everybody knows what's going on with this project, that it's not bottled up and nobody doesn't know what's going on. We will be well informed throughout this whole project, the way it should be built and, and done. Um, there will also be some congestion at times. You know, there's a lot of machinery, a lot of vehicles that will be coming in out of our, our parking lot, and we know that there will be weddings and there will be funerals and other events that happen at this church that need to keep going on. I will work with the contractor Keller to make sure that that is done without any interruption for what 
this church needs to do. Um, if there's anything that anybody sees that you might want some change or something, don't be afraid to bring it to us. We will we'll get it done and we will make this a very positive, um, happy experience. Um, the timeline of this project as of right now is um, November 7th, you're probably going to see some activity with the ground starting to be moved, utilities brought in, um, getting the site prepped for the end of November where you're going to see concrete trucks rolling into this site and pouring foundations. So hopefully by the end of November, um, beginning of December, throughout that, that period, um, we'll have all of the, the footings, the main part of the building completed, that we can start building this building. Do you see the, the studs coming up out of the ground? Um, the beginning of January, sometime in there, depending on, upon weather, that, that's always a, an issue, but we'll work through that. We worked through many of them. And our goal is by next year at this time, it will be complete. Um, we'll be able to move in during that time. So with that, I'd like to thank you guys for having the trust in me to do this. Um, I'll be working for all of you. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, Jerry, and thank you for taking on this uh, role in the next portion of this project. Um, would like to just say a quick recognition to the Franciscan sisters that are here yeah, and yeah. you have served this parish for more than a century and uh, we appreciate all you have done for education. Yeah. And for <laughs> and I would like to bring Father Tom back up here and he's going to take over the program from here. I can still remember just over three years ago, I got a phone call saying, Bishop Ricken wants to see you. <laughs> and when I got there, he was there with, with, uh, with uh, Father Luke, and he, they said, we're looking for a pastor who loves Catholic education. <laughs> so I was excited when they started, said, this is, a, this is an option. And I was excited to say yes because I really care about Catholic education. This is important to me. It has been important all my life. I've had a Catholic school and strong faith formation programs in every parish I've worked in. Mm -hmm. So I was excited to come here and, and just sort of take that love for my Catholic education and try to bring it out here as well. And it's so wonderful to see all the parents and parishioners also excited about bringing our youth to Jesus Christ and to build a community of discipleship where we all will follow Christ. In 1850s, a group of Irish began to arrive in our area and they settled in the Maple Grove area. A few years later, 25 Bohemians showed up. And those Bohemians showed up and went to the Reedsville area. And immediately, they, the first things they did, the first things, was to set up their Catholic communities and build log churches so that we can worship. And then they were prepared when the Germans started to arrive in Brillian and Cassin, And they actually shared pastors at that time because they, 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 there weren't that many around. So they worked together and immediately, what did those poor people, those poor immigrants do? They built not only their churches, but they built schools. They saw how important Catholic education was. They knew how important worship was. They understood that faith was the key to a virtuous life and a strong community. Now remember who these people were. They were your great-grandparents, your grandparents. 
These were your people who did this in our community. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, I often like to remind us that they're still with us. They're still part of our communities. They're in our cemeteries. And you know what? We worship with those people every Sunday when heaven and earth unite in the liturgy of the Eucharist. They are still part of our community. Today, with this project, we take up the challenge that our ancestors began. They built the churches. They built the schools for their children, their grandchildren. They built it for the future of their communities. And now it is our role to do the same thing. Today, we are saying yes to that challenge. We are continuing what our ancestors began. And we are doing it to take the next step like them And we are preparing for our children, our grandchildren, and our church in the future. I just want you all to imagine a hundred years from now. In a hundred years from now, our parish will be planning some big event. They'll be gathering under a tent. And they will be looking back and saying, Our ancestors cared for us and they sacrificed for us. They will be talking about this group here. So, I just would like to say thank you to all of you for all of uh, you have done to make this happen. They've talked about all the committees and such. A lot of people say, Father Tom, you did such a great job. (laughs) I just get the credit. All the work was done by the people in the committees. A lot of the work was done before I even arrived in the parish. All of you have been doing that (coughs) work. And I even like to point out that even in the parish, it's my staff. They they, they do all the work. I'm just the pretty face that they put out in front. (laughs) So before I introduce the bishop... I just I would like to take a moment and recognize that this is an exciting time. And I would like to say that our community has always been attuned to our spiritual lives. And not only does that include Jesus Christ, but also his blessed mother because uh, we had parishes even dedicated to her birthday and to her assumption. So with that, before we I introduce Bishop Ricken, our choir has another piece. I would now like to take this moment to introduce Bishop David Ricken. I know he supports Catholic education in all its forms because he has a passion in our diocese to develop true disciples of Jesus. Bishop Ricken, welcome to Holy Family Church. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much. 
feels good to stand up and get the blood flowing again. <laughs> you can be seated real quickly. I won't take too long. I just wanted to thank Father Tom Long. Oh, oh, I mean Father Tom Long. <laughs> I had to get him back. I had to get him back. And we truly do thank Father Tom Long because it's through him and all of you before that this beautiful church was built and Father Tom Pomeroy for his leadership. And you all are a real example of community cooperation in the parish and with the community here. You're a real example. I'm so proud of you. I'm grateful to you because what you're doing here is building a sign of hope. Doesn't our world, our country, our church need a signs of hope? This is one. You're building one right now. And speaking of signs of hope, I brought this coin with me. I found this coin in the bishop's house. It's a little bigger than your normal coin. This is a memorial, memorial co coin. And it was brought to the bishop's house by Bishop Y. Cicillo. Bishop Y. Cicillo was a council father at the Second Vatican Council. So on the front is a beautiful profile image of Pope John XXIII and of Pope Paul VI. Those are the two that presided over and implemented the Second Vatican Council, which really, in many ways, we've only just started to live. On the other side is Jesus uh, talking to the disciples in the boat, and he's saying, put the, put the net on the starboard side, change your direction, go to the other side, and you will find an abundance of fish. And that's exactly what they did. They followed him, and that's what happened. Well, I would like to use this as an image, children, uh, this is the coin in the kingdom of heaven. Not this particular coin, but on the coin to get to heaven, there are two sides. One is discipleship, and the other is stewardship. Discipleship and stewardship. And I see it all around here. The stewardship of you who are already disciples, Catholic disciples, who want to pa pass a legacy of faith, and good formation on to the next generations, both in Catholic schools and in faith formation. So the stewardship that you're rendering in time, talent, and treasure, you're passing on now to the next generation, as Father Tom said so very beautifully. What a gift. We are at our best when we pass on our faith. What is discipleship anyway? It's three points. It's being a friend of Jesus. Secondly, making a new friend, and thirdly, introducing your new friend to Jesus. It's that simple. It's also, as we're entered into this beautiful one-by-one one campaign, it's approaching people one-by-one. One. And for right now, inviting people to come back to Mass. If people understood the Mass, they would absolutely die of amazement and thrill and beauty to be in the presence of God who has become man and becomes present to us at every Mass. Not only is he present to us, but we get to consume him in his body and blood in the Holy Eucharist. And all of that then sends us out into the world to change the world, to make a difference by exercising our faith and by making disciples. A Catholic school is discipleship on steroids. When you think about it, we get all those hours of instruction, education, personal formation, academic formation, and spiritual formation. We get to educate the whole child. What an entrustment from all of you. And I'm glad that you're calling us to be the very best we can and helping us to continue to care for this beautiful generation. It's all about them, isn't it? Why don't we give them a big hand? So, with this beautiful sign of hope, we are like light in the midst of darkness, joy in the midst of despair and sorrow, and we have an obligation to pass it on, to reach out one by one, to send people out from this community two by two, just like Jesus did. We imitate Jesus by doing things just like he did, one by one and two by two. It's that simple. If everybody here even made two disciples in the next three years, Think of what you could do in your church for Mass. You know, it's not that hard. It's not rocket science. But then we get the privilege of really educating and forming the youth and everybody in what it means to accept the call to holiness 
the call to really enjoy the sacramental life of the church, to study and ponder God's word, and to move it out to help people find meaning in their life, which is what they're really hungering for. We have two or three generations now that have no meaning. They're lost. We are being sent out to care for the lost, to love them, not to judge them, but to attract them into the kingdom of heaven, which is anticipated by the church here on earth. Sound good? Very good. God bless you. It's time to move on to the blessing now, I think. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. The work we are beginning today should enliven our faith and make us grateful, especially as we take part in the process of building a new school here on this site. We know the familiar words of the psalm, if the Lord does not build the house in vain to its builder's labor. Whenever we look to the interests of our neighbor or our community and serve them, we are in a sense God's own co-workers. Let us pray for his help through this celebration, my brothers and sisters, that God will bring this construction to successful completion without harm, without distraction, and that his protection will keep those who work on it safe from every injury and harm. Brothers and sisters, let us listen to the words of St. Luke. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but not do what I command? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, listens to my words, and acts on them. That one is like a person building a house who dug deeply and laid a foundation on rock. When the flood came, the river burst against that house, but could not shake it, because it had been well built. But the one who listens and does not act is like the person who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, it collapsed at once and was completely destroyed. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, let us now ask God, our all-powerful Father, that the work we begin today will contribute to the building up of his kingdom and join us in faith and love to Christ, who is our cornerstone. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer, that he may transform into a living temple of his glory all whom he has gathered here and have faith in Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our that he may ground upon the bedrock of his church the faith of all those who have undertaken this work on this building. We pray to the Lord, Lord that those who labor and who have contributed and who will continue to contribute to help make this new building a reality, may continue to be blessed with health and well-being, we pray to the Lord. Lord that all present here may be cleansed by his divine power and come to share in the celebration of his holy mysteries, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us join our voices, the voice of the church with that of Christ, praying to the Father using those words, which the Son has given to us. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We now go over to the site for the blessing.
Please feel free to step outside into the glorious sunshine for the blessing. And our school choir is going to sing another song as well out there.
Put some dirt in your pocket. You want a tractor with you. Just like Grandpa. And a cow. And a cow, yeah. And a cow and a tractor, right? That's what you do. I know, right? Thank <laughs> you. 